Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. In our show this time, we'll visit the eSports arena at HPU's Aloha Tower campus. We'll check out the equipment, the games, and the players to see what the arena is all about. Under the leadership of its president, John Gotanda, Hawaii Pacific University, HPU, has organized an eSport arena in the student campus at Aloha Tower. The arena had a soft opening last year and a grand opening in February. Cody Down, Dominique Bouchon, and Reed Pasatiempo of HPU appeared on one of our Think Tech talk shows a few weeks ago and gave us an introduction to the project and what HPU hoped to achieve by it. Me and my team, IT, work pretty closely with Dominique's uh, folks over in athletics and um, put a lot of effort into forming a team, getting them um, playing well, uh, working with sponsors and um, other locals in the community to help build the arena out. Um, and so uh, my guys especially spent so much extra time uh, researching the right equipment to use, figuring out the best configurations for the arena, um, ordering the equipment, trying to get the best deals we could, and then being creative with our audiovisual in the arena. I am the supervisor advisor for our esports team, which right now we have a team for League of Legends that plays in the um, Riot Games Campus Series, and we just finished our first season towards the bottom, but we're, we're offering scholarships for the upcoming semester, and we're really excited to see where our team finishes next semester. So this is like real sports. I mean, you have <laughs> it very teams, so. leagues, yes. you have winners and losers we and do. all that. Yeah. We do. It's it? much more like real sports or traditional sports than people may think. I think the easiest way to say it is esports is competitive gaming. Um, it usually deals with multiplayer video games, so you're competing against possibly one, possibly five, possibly even ten other um, competitors around um, at the same time. And then as far as the arena itself, the arena gives them a place to come together to be able to play. It also gives them a facility where um, a lot of gamers, they don't usually get out of their house, let's just say, um, all that often, but the arena gives them a place to come where they can communicate together, work out strategies, build friendships. A few days ago, we walked over to Aloha Tower to see the arena and find out what was going on. We met Cody and Dominique there, and they gave us a tour of the facilities and equipment at the arena. We've got four console stations. We've got Xbox and PlayStation. Um, we also have Mario Kart that you can play here. We've got our VR system, virtual reality in the, in the corner. This is our Oculus. We also have another VR station in the back corner over there. It's an HTC. Um, and then we have 24 high gaming computers, which you saw um, some of our kids playing on earlier. So what does it mean to be captain of a team? What do you have to do? Um, you got to be a leader. I mean, it's like any other traditional sport. You have your captain and, you know, the team member that you look for and you look to to kind of bring the team together and complete, complete a match with a victory. So what do I have to do? I mean, is there a locker room involved? After all, this is an eSports arena. Is there a locker room where I have to give pep talks and all that? Yeah, of course. Can you see our meeting rooms right meeting here? Meeting room. <laughs> Absolutely. So the team will meet in there. Yeah. And the leader will be talking to them. What will he say to them? Um, he'll go over anything. I mean, it depends on what they know about the team. If they've seen them scrim before, they'll go over their, their top players, who they're going to match up with, who they're going to compete against, and try to find those weaknesses and attack. Tell us about this huge, big projection screen you've got in the back. I want to have one for my house. <laughs> But uh, how, how does that work? It looks like really high tech. It looks it's like so high resolution, you think it's a screen, yeah. but it's not a screen. It's, it's just a, a it's wall. A projector. <laughs> yeah. It's just a really high res projector, uh, high lumens projecting on that wall. The projectors and all of our screens are all connected together with uh, matrix switches, so we can display any sort of content on these, on these uh, displays. We can show uh, live gameplay. We can show what we're showing now is just um, some feeds off of Twitch, some pre-recorded, or some um, live Twitch feeds. Uh, we can show console play. We can show all sorts of different things on them. So and there's a guy named uh, Ninja over there. Yeah. So he's one of the the top shoutcasters. He has a channel here, and he he, uh, 
he will talk about his gameplay and people subscribe and, and he'll end up making a lot of money off of this. Right. He, is sure. he here or somewhere else? Oh, he's somewhere else, yeah. I'm yeah. not sure where he's based at. Either. So, and is he controlling the console and controlling yeah. the game right now? So right now, yeah, he's playing the game and he's talking about what he's doing. So there's ways that you can, you can team up in here with your friends and play with people across the world. Uh, games like that that are wide open, people really like. Mm. Um, you know, for, there's first person shooters that are still big. Uh, the, the, the games like League of Legends, which is a team game, which is another one of the top games, is where it's more like a capture the flag type of a game where you're competing against another team of five people. And that's really a lot of teamwork involved, communication, uh, you, know, you know, talking with each other to know which direction to go. And those are pretty popular too. So things that you can, you can play with your friends, but also you can have friends sitting halfway across the world that you can get on the same game together and play together. Uh, how many people can get on this thing at the same time? Well, this one is 100 people per game. Uh, and there's many servers, thousands of servers. So I don't, I don't, I have no idea actually how many are going on at the same time, but each game is 100, 100 people. Oh, so, and you can have lots and lots of game sessions instances, going on. Yeah, there's several the instances, world. yeah, all over the world. And now the company is really trying to get behind the eSports side of it, which they're kind of lagging in. Uh, so what, what other people have done is they've created their own kind of scoring systems so that they can compete with each other, like who has the most kills, you know, who survives the longest, and then you can compete against other players uh, in the same game with that and find out who's winning, you know, who, who the better player is. But really that's a hat ad hoc thing that's just come up. Uh, Epic, the maker of this, this game, is now trying to bring it forward in the esports world and have more of a competitive, competitive environment. Uh, like League of Legends, Riot has a whole whole series of you know collegiate competitions, professional competitions. Blizzard with Overwatch, which is a first-person shooter, uh, is a six-on-six -six game, and they do the same thing. They've got professional leagues around the country. Uh, they started selling uh, franchises last year. A lot of the major cities have professional team franchises. Uh, these players get paid, you know, to play. People go and watch them in a stadium. <laughs> so. That's that's the the way forward with a lot of these games. You say in a stadium? Did you say yeah, that? Right. You can go see this in a stadium. Yeah, some games you can. Uh, League of Legends, uh, Overwatch. They sell at the Staples Center, uh, the Bird's Nest in China. Eighty thousand wow. people oh, wow. sit and watch these. If you go online, you can watch videos of it, and it's uh, you know all these people sitting in the stadium watching you know ten players down there um, playing together. For a huge screen, bigger, way way. Yeah whole side of the barn. Yeah. So uh, how long does it take to play the game? I mean, is, this, is it time limited or is it terminated on, on, on winning? Each game is different. Uh, the, this game, Fortnite, is how it, it takes to get to the last person. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how long the, the game total play is, but really you're, you're waiting to get to that final person who's alive. In League of Legends, whoever captures the flag first, so that could be quickly, but on average I think it's about 30 minutes to 45 minutes per game. And when they do these competitions, they'll do best, you know, three out of five type of games uh, in, in the competitions. Mm. And so you could go sit and watch a League of Legends match, uh, competition in a stadium, and they'll play several games. So one. two or three hours, maybe yeah. more, something yeah. like like a yeah. like a long movie. Yeah. So you know what? It strikes me, Cody, that um, this is free. The one, uh, this yeah. one you're showing us. What's the name again? This is um, Fortnite. 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 Yeah. It's free. Yeah. But other games cost money. Right. And if I come in here and I want to play the other game, um, I go online, I guess, and I play the other game and I have to drop my card or you know, connect yeah, with so PayPal or something. Yeah, certain yeah, certain games you do have to pay for. Like World of Warcraft, Overwatch you have to pay for. Uh, some of the ones, um, there's several VR games that you have to pay for. Uh, this one is free. League of Legends is free. Uh, they make their money on selling, you know, add-ons to the game, and so they make it open to everyone to get people interested in playing. So an add-on give you a special uh, like advantage? Like different skins, different looks to your characters, oh, okay. you know, different, you know, extra accessories, things like but, that. But it's not something that helps you win, though, is it? No. Or is it? PCs, Windows PCs, uh, Intel i7, liquid cooled, so, you know, it, it keeps them cooler and it's quieter. So having the loud fans, you can, you can barely hear these machines. These are 4K monitors from Dell. On the other side over there, we have some other computers a little bit higher quality. Uh, they have a G-Sync ca capability, which syncs them in with the graphics card a little bit better so that there's, there's a less delay in, in gameplay. So not a huge 
huge difference for your average gamer, but maybe for a competitive gamer, the monitors on our what we call the main stage, which is the one over there, are slightly better. We've had uh, uh, symposiums down here, uh, different esports symposiums. We've had lectures. Symposiums and lectures on what? On esports, on on, oh. the, on the business of esports, on game design, on on the evolution, mo evolution. Tech, technology and gaming, just yeah. in general. It was pretty fantastic. So we've had all sorts of faculty interest in using the facilities. They've taught their classes here. Uh, they've they've done class projects for their final projects. We've had students use the high-end gaming systems for machine learning algorithms and things like that that they're creating. And so that is just kind of naturally just happened. I think in the future we really would like to tie it closer to a, a class or a project, you know, university project. Uh, that is definitely in our plans. We want to be what more... What would that class be? Maybe a game design class where they would they would design games and they would test them down here. There's money in designing games. There's money in coding games. That's a pun, isn't it? On your name. <laughs> uh, and I, you know, the question I would ask you is, can I expect to walk in here one day and see on the big screen back there actual code? Can I expect to see some kids coding games? Because that's that's the fundamental operation here. Um, you have to design it, but then you have to implement it so it works really well, and that's coding. We've had like Minecraft camps here, where these kids who are, I don't know, the youngest kids, maybe seven, six or seven, and kids to, to 12, are here programming in Java, learning how to program in Java, and to create a virtual Oahu that they're using in a competition here. So that sort of thing is happening today. The place filled up while we were there and we saw students and kids and families from all around the community. There were lots of players playing and competing in the esports games and lots of parents too. We saw there 24 high-tech gaming computers and consoles with big monitors and gaming chairs and huge big wall screens. And we saw them playing the games that are so popular these days. We walked the floor as we always do, and spoke to some of the players, competitors, families, and friends who were there so we could get a handle on what was happening at the arena and what they thought of it. Cody and I'm the multimedia supervisor, so I install all the TVs, projectors, sound system, lights. It's not easy, is it? No, it's not. There's a lot more buttons than I'm used to. And so you take SimCity and you update it for current technology yeah. and, and ways of gaming, mm -hmm. you know, approaches to gaming. And, and then, you know, you, you bring in all the candidates who are running for political office yeah. and you make them play together in teams yep. if they like, uh -huh. and then the guy who wins the game gets to be the mayor. In a lot of ways that's exactly what, what we're doing with it, um, except with the one caveat that a lot of people get to be mayor out of the process. Um, as far as how that is actually reflected in the real world processes, there's a lot of ways we can talk about that. I'm actually doing a PhD in political science, so I will be... A lot of writings will be coming out about this, and this has kind of been the realm of my PhD work at UH. There were also some senior administrators from HPU there that evening. We spoke to them, too, to learn about the role the arena plays and will play 
for the university and its students and curriculum. 65% of college students actually play video games right now, which is one of the reasons that HPU wanted to build this for our students, because this is what they're doing. You know, other sports they're still interested in, but video games is where it's at these days. Yeah, it's also a feeder thing, isn't it? When I look around the room and I see a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of potential HBU students right here. It is. A lot of the actual high school teams have their, or high schools have their own teams. And so we invite them to come down and play and train. And we actually have held the first competition here uh, between the high schools. Uh, just a little while ago when we opened. So, yeah, it's a great way for us to recruit and bring local students into the school. So tell me, where does it fit with the curriculum? Where does it fit with educating them? So we have a couple of degrees that it actually fits with really nicely. One is an engineering program that looks at uh, computer science and engineering. Uh, another is game design, um, which is actually a minor here, so it links really well. You know, if somebody watching this would, you know, listen carefully, they would figure out that you're associated with HPU. But why don't you tell them straight up what your association is? I am. Uh, I'm the Associate Vice President of Development for Hawaii Pacific University. What do you think of this place? It's really got a certain magic, doesn't it? You know, it, it's, it's got this really good vibe. You know, the, the kids, the students here, they're just enjoying themselves. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's like a different level. You know, they're at home probably playing on their iPads or something like that, like, you know, something like that. But here, I think they're, they're like in a, just, just in a different zone. We talked about that with Corey um, and uh, Dominique, uh, and namely that you can be at home and do this to a certain degree, right. but it's, it's different when you're in a community of people, all of whom are dressed at playing, and boy, you can feel the community here. Yep. But somehow it motivates you differently. Somehow the, the, the gaming experience to play is more intense, more satisfying, more gratification somehow, you think? No, I, and you know what, what this provides is, now you see other people, instead of like online, you're with other people who are enjoying the same, you know, Fortnite, League of Legends, and, and you're with people who are like you and who are enjoying the, the same type of gaming. It's exciting to meet the Dean of Students. Hi. I've been meaning to go back to college for a long time, so maybe you can pave the way for me. Absolutely, right? I mean, who, who doesn't want to be a college student uh, today true. when it's you true. have uh, co-curricular activities like the eSports Arena to really uh, enhance the student experience at HP? When we think about what our students can get when they come to Hawaii Pacific University, I think it's a multitude of things, uh, you know, from both the academics to just overall yes, health, um, entertainment, but but again, you know, community comes in many different ways, and we think this is one of those ways, and we're really uh, excited to have these sports. What uh, are the other ways? What's the larger picture in which this fits? You know, I think it's it's just about the bigger university community and having opportunities to bring in the greater community here. It's very family oriented. Yeah, it's noticed. also very, um, you know, the invitation to come here at Olatar Marketplace at Hawaii Pacific University. It's, it's just a welcoming environment. If you think about the academic component that comes with it, I mean, there's courses that will tie in the computer aspect, the technology aspect, and so it's just not gaming for the pure enjoyment of, you know, personal, but I think there's a, there's a mindset coming into it and there's a, a joining of both the academic and the co-curricular that comes with these sports. I think that's a high value that you can get at other universities in the state of Hawaii, right? Yeah, so no, when you think about true. that, yeah. we really are, um, you know, uh, pioneers in terms of that in the state. And I think for us, this, this is a huge benefit, not only for our university, but for our community. So as the Dean of Students, how will you support and you know propel this going forward for our aspect of it in addition to what athletics is doing the team is doing i think for us when we think about our student organizations oh, we think about here, just individual students wanting to just do better and enhance and say this is what i'm doing and my all, all my other friends going at other universities don't have this opportunity i think that just is is what is unique for um, for everyone and, and with our other students. I think we can do competition that is healthy and, and good and brings our um, greater student body together. Um, I think when you think about like the athletic, the fun competitiveness that comes with this um, type of environment, I think it's healthy and I think that's that's the other aspect I think that comes with it.
We found that the eSports arena is not only a place where students and kids can play and enjoy the most popular eSports games, it's also a place for relaxation and social interaction, for learning about leading edge game design, and of course, for global gaming competition. The eSports arena is a great addition to the HPU student campus at Aloha Tower and to the gaming community in Hawaii. If you have any interest in computer gaming and competitions, it's certainly worth a visit. If you want to know more about the arena, check it out at hpu.edu slash esports slash arena. And now, let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on ThinkTechHawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, Contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. And we're always looking for new shows. We've recently added Outside the Lines, hosted by Rusty Kamori, which covers leadership issues and advice in Hawaii. It plays weekly at 10 a.m. Mondays. You can find the episodes on our Outside the Lines playlist. And we've added Taking Your Health Back, hosted by Wendy Lowe, which covers personal health issues and information to help you improve your health and your quality of life. It plays bi-weeklies at 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. You can find the episodes on our Taking Your Health Back playlist. And we've likewise added a new show called The Will of the People, hosted by Martha Randolph, which covers politics and public and political opinion in Hawaii. It plays bi-weekly at 1 p.m. on Thursdays. You can find the episodes on our Will of the People playlist. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in the current complexity of this country. We want to stay in touch with you and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. And now here's this week's ThinkTech commentary. And I'm here today to talk about a recent failure on all of our parts. On June 14th, 2018, at 3.45 p.m., one big blackout. That blackout would last for over 24 hours. At my home, it lasted for almost exactly 30 hours. Yes, that is 30 hours in the United States on a well-populated island with no electricity. That meant everything in refrigerators had to be thrown out. That meant getting up and getting ready in the dark. That meant sitting in your car with the gas running, with the engine running, 
in order to get air conditioning and in order to charge your phone. Some residents had, had medical issues that meant they needed to have electricity. And so those residents were forced to check into hotels or in some cases, even to go to the hospital. Everyone is saying, I wasn't responsible for this, but let's be honest, there's plenty of blame to go around. Big outages like this don't just happen. We trust our companies to plan ahead, to look for possibilities of things that go wrong and to fix them. It's reasonable to expect that repairs happen in a timely and well-planned for manner. I hope this has inspired you to speak up more and take more action when you see something wrong. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and thank you for speaking up. Mahalo. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech, but first, we want to thank our underwriters. The Atherton Family Foundation, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, Hawaiian Electric Companies, the High Tech Development Corporation, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Integrated Security Technologies, Kamehameha Schools, Dwayne Carisu, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech. M.W. Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sidney Stern Memorial Trust, the Volo Foundation, Eureka J. Sugimura. Okay, Cynthia, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Cynthia does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest, you're a host, a producer, or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.